What is headroom? This question comes from Ryan in Chicago, and he writes, Hi, Paul. My girlfriend and I love your videos and watch the daily posts have become, uh, and watching your daily posts has become an after work ritual for us. <laughs> I'm, I'm truly honored. I, I can't get my wife to watch anything. Not that, you know, anyway, I guess she gets enough of it here at, <laughs> at work. But you, uh, wow, that's cool. Good for you. Good for you both. Um, I, we just, we don't have enough women that are involved, and women love music. But hi-fi, eh, not so much. So I'm really happy to hear when somebody is, has taken an interest in that. Um, I'm curious to know what value more watts brings. We currently use KEF LS50s, with a, as do we at home, with a 50-watt integrated amplifier. Now, what could we expect to gain by swapping the 50 watt for a 100 watt amp, assuming a comparably accurate rating and using the same speakers in the same room? If the answer is headroom, what's that? Thanks. We look forward to seeing you and the team at Expona again uh, this, this coming year. And we look forward to being in Chicago, where Expona is held. We're going to have the third iteration of the AN3 loudspeakers. This, this, I keep saying this, this is the final version. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Um, okay, so as many things in audio, and especially high-end audio, are, it depends. It depends on the kind of music you listen to, it depends on your expectations. It depends on your room size. It depends on the speaker's sensitivity. Now we know the LS50s are not particularly sensitive. They do take some power. So generally, depending on how loud you're playing the music in your room, you're probably pushing that 50 watt amp fairly hard. The second thing is, what kind of music do you listen to and why do you listen to music? So I'll, I'll try and explain that. In my home with our LS50s and Terry's system, it's a background music system. When we cook, when we do things, so we, our living room and our kitchen are sort of combined, right? And we're a very cooking, foodie, sensitive, or, or uh, centric uh, couple. And we have kids over, we have lots, we, we entertain a lot, and the uh, music's playing, but we're not doing any serious listening to it. I mean, on occasion we do, but mostly not. So there, whether it's 50 watts or 100 watts for the type of listening that we do, I would have to say there'd be no difference. Your amplifier will work a little less hard, but that's about it. Now, Sounds like you and your girlfriend or wife, I forgot what, what her spousal status was. Girlfriend, okay. Um, that you maybe are a little bit more serious in your listening habits than we are at home. So in that case, that changes rather dramatically my answer. Because if you're seriously listening, if you're actually lowering down the lights, you're cranking that sucker up, and you're listening to music, and you're trying to enjoy it from a hi-fi sense rather than what we do, which is in a background music sense, then you're going to start noticing when that amplifier gets squeezed. And I, I can't think of a better word, because what's happening is as you get closer to that amp's top wattage, let's say you're running up to 30, 40 watts, maybe 45 watts when you're listening to it loud, you're coming up, you're bumping up near the top of that amplifier's ability to deliver wattage. And we've talked about this before, but it's always worth mentioning again. If we look at an amplifier or any piece of electronics, and let's just say from, from here, zero, to here, which is our 50 watts, within this space, you have a certain level of performance that's going to be really good from well, 
up a little bit to right about there. So maybe 25% if you're lucky, depending on the amplifier, 20% is going to be what we call the linear region. As we start exceeding that linear region, the performance is going to change because we're using, well, we don't need to get all technical, but, but just trust me, the performance will change as we get nearest uh, the, the, the softest passages and the loudest passages. And so where we want to be is kind of somewhere in the middle, okay? That's the sweet spot, if you will, for linearity. Um, I, I imagine amplifiers, I think of more as an engineer, so I look at them without feedback. And, and if you look at an amplifier's curve of its distortion, it goes like uh, a lot of distortion, then it kind of evens out, and then it has a linear area where it's kind of right about in the middle, and then it starts rolling off again as it gets t towards the top end. And you can see it in a distortion graph, you can see it uh, in any number of ways. Now feedback makes up for a lot of that, but <coughs> the, the open loop and closed loop performance do make a difference and linearity makes a heck of a difference. So all that said, if we understand that where we want to be is in that sweet spot, then headroom allows that sweet spot to get bigger. And the more headroom you have, the larger the sweet spot is in the amplifier so that at any volume level you're listening at, the amplifier is not getting close to its extremes, which is why we always recommend buying an amplifier far larger than what you actually think you're going to need for headroom. Headroom is the ability of the amp to have, well, it's, it's how much the amp has in that sweet zone before it gets out of that and starts approaching the extremes. More headroom, higher extremes, better sweet spot. Hope that helps. Okay, talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.